Well, it's, uh, it's noon and um, welcome to uh, Zooming In, Weekly Curatorial Conversations from the Magnus Collection of Jewish Art and Life at UC Berkeley. Uh, we are presenting every week for about half an hour. Uh, Francesco Spagnolo here, curator of the Magnus, and my colleague Shir Gal Khojavi. Shir, uh, unmute your... your uh, Hello, everyone. I'm also here. Uh, good to see you. We're, we're waiting a few, a couple of minutes to let all the participants uh, trickle in. Uh, some have signed on just before and others are joining us, so we see the numbers rising. Um, as a reminder, we'll be with you every week from the Magnus or from Zoom. It's The format is a Zoom webinar, so all the participants have their cameras turned off. Uh, but you can interact with us uh, in two ways. Uh, you can use the chat function if you want to let us know, for example, where you're zooming in from, and also uh, if you have any technical uh, difficulties. Our colleague Nat is uh, also with us and is managing uh, your participation. And if you have any questions for us, we'll make room for, for questions and hopefully some answers if we have them uh, towards the end of our presentation. Uh, so if you have any questions, there is a Q&A function. So the lower, in the lower bar of your screen, there is a Q&A and you can, you can uh, let us know what, uh, what, uh, what you would like to uh, discuss and we'll, we'll, we'll try and, and give in answers. We see people joining in from Brookline, Massachusetts and, uh, and uh, we're about to get started in just a few seconds. Uh, the format is uh, pretty simple. We'll be presenting around one or a few and a few a little array of objects from the Magnus Collection of Jewish Art and Life. As a reminder, the Magnus is one of the largest Jewish museum collections in the world, in North America, for sure, and the only one in the world that's associated with a major research university like UC Berkeley. Uh, we'll be presenting our research, uh, what we find in the collection, what we have uh, found in the past, what, what our desiderata are for, for the future right here, and we'll be alternating going back and forth mm -hmm. in, uh, in taking the lead and, and leading these conversations, but the conversations will very much be also uh, led by you who are following us from home. So as a reminder, again, zooming in uh, every Friday, starting at noon for about half an hour, including your questions and maybe, maybe your answers. And we're starting today with uh, a topic that seems uh, very apropos between pandemics and uh, tragic fires. wildfires in, in, uh, in, in California and more. We are discussing Hebrew amulets and we're going to try and kind of deconstruct them for you uh, and uh, break them apart in various elements. And uh, the subtitle we gave for today's presentation is Practical Magic. Uh, that's what amulets are. They're a way to kind of address the world right uh, here. Uh, exactly. And especially at times of vulnerability. So they're designed to, to help uh, when we feel or when people feel the most uh, vulnerable. Do you use any amulets in your life, Shir? I think I might need a few at this time, but I think by the end of this uh, talk, we might find a way to, to get a few from different uh, places. So I'll save that surprise for the end. <laughs> uh, one thing that really struck me as I started studying Hebrew amulets um, some years back was that uh, in a way they reflect the anxieties of our times and their concerns that are often relegated to issues of health insurance, as we can see homeowner insurance. And, uh, uh, but these are from the early modern period and some of them are actually very modern. They're very, very recent. Uh, what we see on the, on the screen is a, an amulet plus a meditational uh, device. It's many things on the screen from Morocco. But uh, in the Magnus collection, there are tens of amulets and these are some mm -hmm. of the ones that we'll be uh, discussing today. Uh, they are written and uh, the text is very carefully choreographed as you can see, it's uh, laid out in all sorts of ways. And what materials? Uh, help me out, Shira. In silver, paper. we got paper, we got uh, silver, parchment paper, yeah. we have scrolls, we have, well, I don't think we have any, we might, we don't have linen in our collection, I think, but we might. Um, what else do we have? Um, we have them in different sizes, um, different shapes, um, from extremely large ones, uh, which were sometimes even reproduced uh, to the masses, to tiny ones that could be kept in your pocket or around your neck. Um, what else? They can be worn, they can be displayed on walls. They, 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 they serve all yeah. kinds of uh, purposes for, and functions. For household, and, for a synagogue, for a community, for a um, yeah. private family, individuals. We have quite a repertoire in short. Mm -hmm. And today we'll be discussing specifically some aspects of amulets, shapes, 
names and text, all protective. So protective shapes, protective names and text. And we'll end with some visual characters. Who are the characters in the stories? And there really, there really are narratives in these in these documents, right? Uh, here are some ones. more. You, we can see how they're how you know characters and text move around and shapes, stars, circles, and and uh, they're they're somewhat dynamic. And and here are, and we'll deal with them some some of the characters in the in the story, just some of them. Uh, so let's uh, let's get started. Here is a, an example that kind of like covers everything, right? This is an amulet, most likely Central Eastern Europe. We're still debating where it's from. It's 19th century for sure. Micrography, yep. so very tiny text. And we did a, Sherry, actually you list, you made this list. So you want yes. to tell us about what, what this amulet is for? This is probably one of my favorite amulets, um, which took a very long time to work on. Uh, in the center, you see uh, the shapes that you see in the center are all uh, obviously handwritten and they're all tiny texts describing different stories and references to different characters from the Bible. But around the areas that we marked are um, all for protection and they are protecting against all these evils that we wrote uh, to your right there. So indoors and outdoors evils um, from falling, from, uh, from earthquakes, from drowning at sea, from in, in the city, so from uh, when moving between cities or something that could happen to you in the city. So this is a period where they didn't have um, any kind of car or, um, or private transportation, but they did walk and get into cities from di in different ways. So that um, by day and If the by proverbial flower pot falls on your head, <laughs> this will cover you. So it yes. really or is helping piano. piano yeah. Or a piano, on your yes. Head. yes. <laughs> from a balcony, you think, yes. You think big. <laughs> I think small. <laughs> um, uh, but it, it also, it's, it's a lovely amulet because it also describes uh, things, um, issues of the heart and issues of the soul. And so it tries to, pr to, um, to protect you from sadness. It tries to protect you from heartbreak, uh, from pain, from illness. Um, and then we get kind of more into our talk today, which is really the illness element and of course from Lilith, the evil angel, and uh, other evil magical spells. Uh, and, and I like how it that. concludes, and from every bad and evil thing. So yes. let's hope that these amulets will actually uh, uh, cast protection. We need, mm -hmm. we need a lot of it these days. We need so it. Mm -hmm. let's get to shapes, right? So we're sort of Absolutely. building up how amulets work. So shapes, uh, we... we're pointing to two classic types of shapes, right? Stars yes. and circles, or circles and stars. So, so yeah. what's going on here? What so do we, we really have picked, on the left? Uh, yeah, we really picked the detail uh, out of these uh, larger amulets. And um, this is to your left is a detail from an amulet, a general amulet, you might say, against, uh, against disease. And it, uh, it's a, uh, oh, thank you. It's the six pointed star, which uh, many of us are familiar with also as the shield of David. And in this uh, six pointed star, in each one of these four six pointed stars, are uh, the names of angels, the name of God, and other protective elements, such as mm -hmm. if you see on your right on the bottom there, the prayer um, uh, El Narafela, which is uh, in Hebrew. Uh, El in Narafala, yes. So, El Narafala, so this, this, this is a quotation from, from, from the Bible, from Numbers, and yes. it refers to when Miriam is, is sick, and this is a, a yeah. request by, by Moses by to Moses. heal mm -hmm. his sister. Yeah. Miriam. So this is an acronym. So it's just the beginning letters of the verse from the Bible mm -hmm. uh, that become kind of like a formula in its own, in its own right. And all those Absolutely. little dots above the Hebrew letters indicate that it is a formula, that it mm -hmm. is an acronym and a formula. And then, of course, the name Shaddai. But we'll talk about names uh, in a yes, little bit. Yes, we'll get to it in a little bit. And, uh, and words can also be used to create shapes. Like in this case, on the right, we have circles, protective mm -hmm. circles created with words. What kind of words are there? What do we, we have, have so let's see we have uh, so first of all we have the main the main character that's it's a chair and an eagle right above yep. the chair or behind the chair it's the chair represents uh eliza's uh chair which is used for for circumcision traditionally and uh the the eagle or the vulture above the the chair can be seen as uh, as a threat or as a protector, it really depends on the interpretation, but we believe it's a threat. And um, the circle, the four circles around, um, the four textual circles, sorry, around the chair 
represent four different types of blessing or uh, prayers and blessings. So the first circle um, go is uh, dis discussing uh, Psalms ninety one, which is should I should I go on or I think maybe yeah yeah should please continue. like tell us you know there there are various quotations they're all they're all there are so many quotations but here but they're 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 protective I, if I remember correctly there is. Uh, a, a psalm, there is the priestly blessing. The priestly blessing is the next, and then there's Song of Songs. Um, and the, the last one discusses Proverbs 30, 17, and it's really fantastic and relevant specifically for this, uh, for this amulet and for this representation of the bird, because uh, the, it quotes basically the Proverbs 30, 17, which is the eye that mocks a father and disdains the, the homage to a mother. The ravens of, of the brook will gouge it out. Young eagles will devour it. So here we really are looking at something that, ref that refers specifically to the representation in the center. So the protective circle seems to be protecting against the evil uh, eagle the evil at, at the center. Or exactly. vulture, and that could be also, as we were saying, a representation of Lilith. But we'll get, we'll get into that into that Very later. soon. Uh, yeah. we, we have more, right? Uh, we have other protective. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, I just wanted to mention quickly the if you can go one up French one uh, slide up for a second the one the one back. that we did yeah one back the okay. one uh, representation in the center that we didn't talk and I just want to mention it briefly because it's slightly different is the um, the five pointed star the pentagram which is also sometimes referred to as uh, Solomon's uh, seal and it's just to kind of let you think about the letters around it. And um, it says, so the letters together make Elohim tzva, Elohei Tzvahot, uh, which is the Lord of hosts, Lord of hosts from, the, from the Bible. And in the center is the letter Ha, He, which is also the representation of God. And we'll get to that in a minute. So thank you. Just wanted to show <laughs> a different shape. We can move on now. And we have more shapes here and we see how they contain text, right? On the, mm -hmm. on the left, they contain uh, the name of God on the right, on the, on the left, I'm sorry, the, the, the verse and on the right, the name of God, right? So they can, yes. these shapes, and in this, this amulet specifically combines both the six pointed star and the circle. So it's mm -hmm. like double protection in a way. Right? Exactly. Double protection and also uh, protection, as we'll discuss in a bit, uh, in terms of the text and the use of the, of the alphabet, the Hebrew alphabet, um, because uh, to, in the circle on the right, you act, they actually used each one of the, of the alphabet letters in Hebrew with the two letters representing God. So Aleph until Taf with Yud He following it with it that you can find around. Letters from the, from the name of God in Hebrew. Yes. Um, and then we have names, apropos. So exactly. let's see what we find. Well, names of angels and of course, most importantly, and we see it at the center here in both, both, both amulets, the name of God, right? On the left is the name Shaddai, which one was the name of God, but also all the permutations of the four letter name or tetragrammaton, four letter Hebrew name of God. And then the four angels, who are, who are these angels? Raphael, Gabriel, Uriel, and, uh, and, Mac and Michael. <laughs> yeah. um, but these four angels also appear in the blessing, uh, in a prayer, sorry, for protection that is traditionally said before uh, you go to bed. And I'll just quote from it. Um, may, may the angel Michael be at my right. So you can see that he is actually on the right. Uh, may the angel Gabriel be on my, at my left. And he is written on the left. And in front of me, the angel Uriel, he's on the bottom right there. And behind me, the angel Raphael, who is there the on the The healing left. angel, absolutely. Yes. And of course, this prayer ends with above my head, the Shekhinah, the divine presence of God, who is found in the center of both these circles right here. Mm -hmm. um, more, uh, more names. Uh, the name of God is permutated in all kinds of ways. The alphabet is associated with all the letters. So here are the the four letters of the, of the name of God, the letter Yud, et cetera. And, and then they are all combined in different ways with different letters of the alphabet to create not just new words, invented words, but invented sounds. Mm -hmm. And exactly. then we have, of course, also the names of the patriarchs, the matriarchs that evoke protection and, and sort of uh, in, 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 in Jewish lore, 
since mm -hmm. they were often treated with grace by God, it's a way to invoke the same type of grace upon, upon ourselves. Basically, that's what these analysts try to do. Um, texts, we already went a little bit into texts, but let's, let's go and, and see some of the, the key texts that we find in analytics and how they work. First of all, they're very dynamic. Oftentimes for us to read them, we have to I mean, tilt our heads around or turn the amulet around, uh, right? They, they, like, for example, this one starts here, continues oh, yes. there, then goes down, exactly. then turns around, etc. that continues in the center. It's everywhere. Yeah, it's absolutely everywhere. And you and have to find it. It's, uh, it's a bit of a puzzle to put together. Yeah. It is, a puzzle. Mm -hmm. it is a puzzle, but in a way that sort of that that research is what makes the amulet precious and you know possibly even more powerful, uh, mm -hmm. because it's uh, it kind of dazzles the evil spirits, it confuses <laughs> the evil spirits, right? And that's a good way to 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 protect ourselves. Um, and and in this case, this is an amulet to protect newborn children from Lilith. We'll get to Lilith in a second, but uh, it quotes the the priestly blessing from from the Book of Numbers and uh, and basically invokes divine protection over newborn children. Uh, names can also, yes, mm -hmm. can also be mixed with names of angels. We have here a whole list, Hasdiel, Tavriel, Shmariel, Magdiel, etc., etc., etc. And many of these angels actually, uh, I find they have uh, their own powers. They mean something, they do something. Although what we've learned is that in, over time, it's more the, the sound of their name that's considered protective. Sometimes, Absolutely. you know, the angel that protects from this is, used, is misused. It's protecting from, some, from mm -hmm. something else, but the, the sound of its name is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is what really matters. So it's the sound of text and not just the text itself. That, uh, yeah, there's a lot of use of sound that we'll also mention in a couple of slides because there's a lot of use of onomatopoeia when you get into reading and these uh, blessings are actually meant to be read. Um, and saying some of these names in some of these texts. There is definitely magic once you speak the prayers and speak these texts out loud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, more. Okay. More texts. This is actually, so I, uh, we brought the example of the full, uh, in very small uh, size on the, on the right here, of the full Shiviti that this example comes from. So just to differentiate Shiviti from amulets in one sentence, um, and very, hope it's not too vague. Shiviti Adonai Le Mid, I have placed the Lord always before me, is, uh, is an amulet, a type of amulet. Usually, usually it's, it's uh, placed in synagogues um, above the podium uh, where the service is led by the Chazan. And it's really a way of, it's a meditative com contemplation on God, on God's name. And it often has uh, the menorah shape there, uh, as well as the, uh, uh, the uses, many uses of the tetragram, tetragrammaton, which is the divine name of God. Um, we picked the, this small example, and you'll see another small example in a bit, where you find both the priestly blessing represented there in, uh, in, uh, on the right side, on the bottom, and also the uh, Song of Ascents which is often used in, uh, in these Shibidi amulets and also in Which is amulets. laid out as a, as a, in the form of a menorah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there, they, our audience is calling me saying that I'm interrupting you, but I'm actually trying to keep us on time because yeah, we have so more to share. So let's keep going. We have so much more. <laughs> yes. This is really just a bit of our research. Yeah. And, and we're eager to, to get your questions. So again, those of us who are watching us from home, if they can post questions to the Q&A, and then we'll get to them in just a few minutes. But we're talking about visual characters. And oh, they're kind the of fun part. Yeah. <laughs> so who's here? Pretty Lilith, fun. scary Lilith. Um, I hope you can all identify her. Um, Francesca, do you mind? Yeah, look at, look at the teeth. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the feet. And the clawed feet. Clawed feet yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and the text in her belly, we think it's, well, in her body, says uh, in Hebrew, Lilith incarcerated in handcuffs. And in the center there, the protection of the unborn child against harm, which is, uh, which is telling us basically what this amulet is for. And of course, the names of the three protective angels, Sanoi, San Sanoi, and Saman Gilaf. So Francesco, yes. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let you speak about Lilith. Oh yes, bit. well, the angels, yes, <laughs> well. Uh, and also how they're pronounced, because the Hebrew is a, is, a, is a language made of consonants, so how we add the vowels changes, but we actually 
lucked out with this one amulet at the bottom because all the vowels, sim the symbols of the vowels are, are added to the name. So we, we have here a way, a key to pronounce them as Sanoi, San Sanoi, Semangalaf, and sim Samengalon. And uh, they also are associated with shapes, right? And these shapes are, are pretty canonical. So we find them in manuscripts from the 9th, 10th century all the way into, into the present. Mm -hmm. um, these are angels that chase away Lilith. Lilith, again, uh, there are many legends around Lilith and not just Jewish legends, it's a, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a long story. But uh, for the purpose of these amulets, she really threatens newborn children mm -hmm. and also mothers during pregnancy and especially in childbirth. And newborn so, boys. And especially on boys, especially because, absolutely. You know, <laughs> and uh, and <laughs> and so so the shapes of these angels are also curious and and somewhat mysterious. But we find them over and over again in various in various documents, various amulets. So here they are. So what do angels look like? Well, now we know. Right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> and know. also their names. Uh, when when we speak their names, Sanoi and San Sanoi and Saman Gelof, there is something with the sound that is almost um, like a whisper of a, of a fire or of a snake, sun, 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 which we need to think about sometimes uh, because- Alliteration, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and the magic of text. So essentially shapes and, uh, and names and, uh, and the texts, and of course, all of these visual characters are what combine, make the, the key elements of amulets. But each time we confront an amulet, we find new things. We have to rethink the way we study them. So each amulet, in a way, it's its own, it's its own uh, story and tells its own story. And also have to think that many of these were created for specific people. So sometimes they have people's names and so on. So they were created to address very, very specific concerns. As they were saying, these concerns are reflected in the contemporary world in, in the form of insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, in the contemporary world, these these uh, these uh, objects can still resonate. And uh, just in the in the news cycle, we heard with the head of the pandemic in Israel that some rabbis, some kabbalists, were producing amulets and distributing them around uh, around the state of Israel. Uh, but uh, we also uh, we also found out that uh, that an artist reproduced them. These were distributed by the the legendary. Uh, Toy yes. Story F.A.O. Schwartz in, in New York, right? So, yes, uh, and I checked yesterday ago. and I tried to contact the artist and you can't get them anymore. They're out of, uh, they're out of, yeah. yeah they were sold only in 2007. Mm -hmm. yeah. so That's too bad because uh, probably with, they would be in high demand uh, today. Yes, these absolutely. days. Uh, so again, as a, as a reminder, next week we'll meet again and talk about uh, Arthur Schick and especially uh, civil rights in America, uh, based on the holdings of the Magnus. And these are the curatorial conversations of the Magnus every Friday. Um, and, uh, and now we, maybe we can actually get back in, on video and, yes. uh, and, uh, <laughs> and, and see what the, what the questions were and see what, how we can, we can answer them. Uh, so let's, uh, yes, let's, let's, see. let's see our questions. Um, it's, it's hard for me to see the questions and also the also the, uh, the, the screen share, so I'm, I'm, I'm moving back uh, that way. So let's see. I thought that my micrography is where the words make the picture because you should or sh show a face without the solo words of the person. Uh, well, micrography technically means micro, as in small graphos, uh, small writing, and then it's small writing that's used to, to uh, it's often to create shapes, but not only. So it can be used visually, uh, but uh, but not. You wanna you wanna take the next questions? Uh, well, uh, there is a request to show the amulets themselves. So I wonder if maybe we could just share your uh, uh, the first two slides that we had, Francesco, so people can see the full amulets that we used. Uh, if you want to go to. back and right. and share my screen again. Let's see if I can. Perform. And then we can also um, address. Um, oh, I'm sharing. Let me see. Uh, we can also address where they came from. Um, and if we I know have to they go were all the way back, but yeah, sorry. Okay. No, no, it's okay. It's fine. Um, <laughs> we can, so there's a question about, um, where the amulets, uh, were to be worn or to be placed. So I, I can answer that as far as my knowledge, uh, and research takes me. Um, 
that these amulets were uh, usually put in at home uh, or kept uh, kept on a wall. Uh, some of them were were probably kept uh, pers to in a, you know in a place personal for somebody when they were made for somebody specific. Uh, but the amulet that you see on the on the left there in silver actually is connected to a chain, a very long chain, and it could be hung. It could also technically be hung around somebody's neck, but it, it's a, a bit of a heavy amulet to be hung around somebody to be just walking down the street. So, Francesco, do you have anything to add maybe about the place? Well, you know, of these they, yeah, so, so they can hang near. Some amulets could be posted on the four walls of a room during, during childbirth. And uh, there are colleagues in Israel who believe that the one with the eagle that we show was part of a set of four with four different animals that uh, in, in their interpretation may have been protective, although the text we quoted uh, suggests otherwise. But we cannot go so deep uh, into these things because as we were saying, sometimes it's really hard to, to, to really uh, decipher. Right? And we can only share as many ideas as we can, we can find. Uh, we are, we're being asked whether there, there are also uh, protectors against fire, and we, we mentioned yes. one, and, yeah, and actually more than one there are specifically uh, about fire. So yes, mm -hmm. fire is very much one of the things that people fear. And um, uh, any, is, well. is, is there anything in Yiddish? Uh, sometimes there are amulets with Yiddish and also with Judeo-German, mm -hmm. uh, so before Yiddish. And uh, let's see, what else do we find? How do you describe or interpret the Hamsa? Uh, well, the Hamsa is a protective uh, hand interpreted in various ways, but it's a symbol, it's a protective symbol that's shared between Jewish and Muslim uh, traditions. So it's very ubiquitous in, in Jewish amulets. We didn't deal with Hamsa today, uh, but we could some other time. Yeah, we could definitely have a talk about that. Yeah. Um, also, the, um, we showed you briefly the five-pointed star, and when, when it goes back to um, to King Solomon, it's actually, it actually references sometimes uh, the five senses, but often the five fingers of the hand. So, uh, so we need to remember that as well in terms of the Hamsa, the, the hand and the five fingers. Yeah. Um, and uh, the somebody image. in the audience is reminding us that many of these amulets were collected, and that's very true because uh, Seymour Fromer, the founder of the Magnus, uh, was very interested in amulets and, uh, you know, having known Seymour and worked with him. Uh, uh, yes, he was, he was, uh, and I, I think I, I kind of got the bug from him. I started to discover amulets. And then we've had students uh, research them with us. And we even performed the amulets with uh, Israeli artist Victoria Hanna in the series a few years ago. So we've been doing a lot of work and continuing in, the, in, those, in those steps. Um, uh, so one or two more questions. Yes, a couple okay. more questions before we say goodbye because we, you know, we're not done. We will be back next week. So, you know, stay tuned and, and come back and join us. And of course, you're welcome to send us more questions. Um, mm -hmm. on Magnus at berkeley.edu. And if you go to magnus.berkeley.edu, you can search for amulets on our website and you'll find all kinds of resources there as well. So let's um, see, what other questions are there? Let's see. Um, we have time for one more. Okay. You want to so, pick one? Um, what is the relationship between mezuzot and amulets? That's a good one. That's a great one. Um, Francesco, I, I well, think. Well, mezuzot are also amulets. And in fact, they prominently display the name Shaddai, which was one of the names of God that we displayed earlier and that's featured in amulets. So mezuzot has in the, the, the boxes or the containers of parchment text that, uh, that are affixed on doorposts in Jewish homes uh, are indeed also amulets, but they're not just amulets. They're also a way to uh, perform the text and the commandment of the Bible that says, put these words on your doorposts. Post, Long story, but, uh, but uh, very, very good questions. We're getting very good questions here. So yes. I think that, me, that bodes well for, for, for next For week. audience also. Let me just add, uh, some people asked for, um, for further reading about this. So I think we can, we can post a few, couple of the books uh, that we also sometimes use uh, that are in our, li our library um, yeah. Well, what online. we can do, maybe we can use Instagram to, to do that in the next few days. So we'll, yes. we'll stay tuned. We're not going away. <laughs> We're still here. Yes. So please continue with so, the questions. And 
Yeah. So again, these are the, the zooming in curatorial conversations from the Magnus with uh, Shir Galcojavi and Francesco Spagnolo. And uh, we'll be back and next week we'll hear Shir lead their conversation around there for Shir. So uh, again, every Friday at noon. And thank you everybody for following us, 78 participants uh, and uh, from around the country and maybe even beyond. So we're looking forward to the next one. And thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Matt, for helping facilitating uh, everything on, on Zoom and uh, see you next week. See you, have a good weekend, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.